Love your neighbor. It's one of the most important commandments Jesus gives us in the New Testament. But what would you do if you found refugees on the doorstep overnight, knocking on your church door? Many Christians in Iraq found themselves in that situation about a year ago, when thousands of people fled from the Mosul area that had just been taken over by the Islamist extremists of IS. They followed the commandment of Jesus in a very practical way. They started to take care of the refugees. It's a year later now. Have the churches been able to continue in their charitable role? In the summer of 2014 we met this young man, Martin. He was studying to be a priest, but was thrown in at the deep end when the crisis began. He started to help in the relief right away. I was struck by his strong sense of calling at the time. On a rainy day we meet Martin again. The situation for his people has improved slightly. They are not living in an unfinished building anymore, but share apartments. Martin has continued his studies, but still works with the displaced in his spare time. I teach them catechism and I have many groups of youth, teach them about Bible, about uh, social uh, life, and visit many families there. After it became clear that the situation wouldn't change soon, many people started leaving Iraq, also people from Karamles. The, this is the circumstances, uh, it is difficult, of course, because I uh, lose my uh, village and my church, and many of my people, before uh, all these things, I lose my family when uh, has left uh, my uh, country three years ago. This situation uh, sometimes, you know, uh, I am a human, so I have many thoughts in my mind. I, how can I still here and who will I serve? People will go, uh, will leave this country. I will, I, I am thinking I will just uh, serve the walls and uh, the buildings. I'm very curious how Martin looks at the situation. Now things have seemed to get more hopeless. Has he lost his sense of calling? No. I think this, this situation proved me in my, uh, in my calling. I have to feed people with charity, with hope. I have a goal to be like a Christ. That's, uh, so that's what I am doing here. Mm. Uh, when I put the image of Christ in front of uh, me, I forget everything. Martin has made a very visible step in his calling lately. He swipes through the pictures on his iPhone to tell us about his ordination as a deacon that happened a few weeks before we speak to him. It was a very meaningful event for him, but also for the people he is serving. How was it for them that someone from their village yeah. was ordinated deacon? They were waiting to be deacon. They were waiting for me. Yeah? Yeah, and they were very happy and also we have done a big celebration here. Uh, we, I also gathered many people from my village and other villages. They came here and uh, they still uh, uh, dancing and praying uh, from maybe uh, for six uh, hours. Is it something hopeful for them that there's someone become a deacon from their village? Of like course. A... They know, you know, we are a small village so we know each other. They know my family is not here and I have uh, decided to stay with them, to serve them, to be with them. If uh, my church put it me in the desert, I can serve there. I can, from, uh, from sand, ma make a house. Yeah. Martin is just one of the many Christians that haven't given up on their calling. One of the many Christians that has been faithful in following Jesus' commandment to love their neighbor. Open Doors will continue to stand beside the Christians in Iraq through local partners.